Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing up the Madden cheese as always. Got another tip video slash gameplay for you today. Today we'll be going over uh, basically how to read your opponent, whether on offense or defense. These are going to be tips that you can use throughout the game to basically know exactly what your opponent's going to do on any given play. Um, like obviously that'll change from first quarter to fourth quarter, but ultimately these are tips that are going to give you the best indicator on what your opponent's going to do next. So before I get into the video, if you guys want to do me a little bit of a favor, scroll down a little bit, hit the like button. And likes, shares, comments, all those things really help out my channel and my videos. So if you want to help me out with that, I'd really appreciate it. And if you like what you see, make sure to stick around by hitting the subscribe button. Other than that, let's go and let's get right into the video. So I'll be starting off on defense in this video, uh, which is probably the biggest issue that people have is reading your opponent on offense. Uh, and there's several indicators that you can do throughout the game uh, to read your opponent on offense. One of the first ones right at the bottom of the screen right there. Personnel packages are usually a pretty strong indicator of whether somebody's going to run or pass. A two wide receiver set is not typically something that people are going to pass the most out of. Two tight end sets especially are typically going to be running sets. Now to start the game, I'm going to come out on my base package defense, which is a pretty good defense anyway a nickel uh, man too then there are several indicators that i can read uh, just based off of my opponent's personnel package to where i think the ball might go number one where's the running back the running back is in a position where the only real run play that's likely is an inside zone uh, or something to the right so my first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to shift my defense not a huge adjustment but it's something that's going to give me an advantage if i do it consistently throughout the game which i do secondly we have to look at if it is a passing play where's the most likely position that the pass play is going to go it's most likely going to go on the right side of the field for two reasons number one there's three wide receivers on the right side and only one possibly two including the running back on the left so i make my adjustment my flat to that side and secondly the larger portion of the field is on the right side so since it's about 60 percent of the field is on the right and only about 40 percent of the field is on the left that's two indicators that's exactly where the play is going to go and then sure enough on the very next play that's exactly what he tries to do but there was nothing open so those are three indicators that you should use pretty much every play throughout the game to really have an advantage over where your opponent's going to go. So here's another play. He runs a hurry up. I'm sure he probably didn't necessarily want to considering the personnel package that he has um, is once again mostly loaded to the right. And you can see exactly why most people don't run their offense to the short side of the field because he really had nowhere to go. Even if he would have caught that and ran with it, where would he have gone with the ball? The sideline basically comes up on you too fast. So in the next play, because he needs 11 yards, which is another indicator, I'm pretty sure he's not going to go to the short side again. So I basically make my adjustment to the wide side of the field trying to take that away. Because like I said, this is something where typically uh, people are going to go to the open side of the field. And that's exactly what happens as I ultimately try to send the, the closest defender to the quarterback to try to cut off a run. And I basically left that guy wide open in the middle of the field. It happens. And he gets the first down. On the next play, he tries to stretch out the play again. Only this time, uh, I switch over and I undercut it with a uh, really good user play from Tyler. Matthew. Gotcha, Tyron Matthew, on a side note, you're going to see him in a couple of gameplays here coming up. He's one of the best cards in the game right now. I love Tyron Matthew. He's an absolute beast. First play on offense, I'm coming out my Heisman. Uh, you know, basically, I use this a lot, and he uses that perfectly. Nope. I mean, this guy here, he's actually a really good user defender, which is one of the reasons I'm making this gameplay. And that brings me to my next two indicators. The first one is oh. motions. Motions are typically a good indicator where the ball is going to go, especially on the open side of the field like I am, because that's exactly what I'm attending here. Uh, the next indicator is the weakness of your defense he uses the weakness of his cover three which is right at the seam that's typically the best indicator of where the ball is going to go as well you have to imagine that your opponent knows where the weaknesses of your defense and they're going to try to attack that he took that away and i throw an interception yep. it's really that simple like i said a really good user on the other side of the ball so he's really going to make me step my game up here later in the video so starting out on defense once again hits me with an inside uh you know a jet sweep with the tight end i actually like that play um it's not always that successful but it is what it is so second and three down and distance is a really high indicator as well he only needs three yards so i shift my defense expecting run for only three yards and then sure enough he hits me with short slants and i was all over it i just didn't quite have the speed uh, that i would need as a user to shut that down so he gets a big enough play to, to move the ball now that he's run a couple plays the next indicator would be his play style he really hasn't run the ball very much there was the first run of the play of the game that i can remember and it didn't go anywhere so ultimately this guy is probably more of a passer so i really have to make my adjustment 
offense to be more pass heavy based off of the fact that he hasn't had success running the ball and he really hasn't run the ball that much at all uh, you can see on the very next play though he gets a pretty favorable animation with derrick henry once people get inside the red zone though the tendencies tend to change so i'm expecting a run here i actually come out with a pretty run heavy defense and he hits me with a bubble screen so i was right it was an rpo which is technically a run so i still maintain that is an indicator when people could get inside the red zone they typically become run first players because it's easier to score that way so that's something that i would definitely say play the run first on the offensive side i'm basically going to uh, try to hit him with a home run here i mean i get lucky I, I go up i try to make a play on the ball and sure enough we get a penalty so it's going to walk me down to the other side of the field and then I, I was kind of inspired by what he did so i go with my own rpo because they are very good plays the next tip uh is read the defense i know it sounds pretty simple but i see a cover three so i go with the uh, the cover three wide receiver screen slash smoke route which is a very good cover three beer and i get inside the, almost to the five then on the next play i mean i'm going to come out in something run heavy again i see his user cheating over to the strong side he's worried about the run because like i said everybody becomes a runner once they get inside the five inside the ten uh sure enough so i read the defense i see it's a man coverage we get a really easy release and we get a really easy touchdown as he's crashing in to try to stop a run play that didn't happen so back on the defensive side uh plenty of time left uh, my opponent for whatever reason i guess he decides that um three minutes is enough time to run a methodical offense and he's trying to blow it up he's trying to throw it over the top he actually had a little bit of a, of a window gotcha, but i got a really cheesy uh interception animation with richard sherman that's what happens when you throw against a guy who's six foot three very good cornerback he makes a ton of plays for me as well next play on offense look at the run blocking by this guy right here number 11 he pushes out the first guy then blocks two more defenders on the way for me to get a very big run down inside the five i don't know how bo jackson got caught what? uh but ultimately he gets caught a couple of times for some reason he just doesn't have that breakaway speed that a guy of his caliber should have uh and then i get in a little bit of trouble on the goal line with trying to run so i decide to spread my opponent out try to run some pass plays and i don't see anywhere where he is on the field this is something you have to watch too watch where your opponent is pre-snap if he makes any movements i had no idea when i decided i basically pre-diagnosed i'm gonna hit this zig route because it looks like a man i had no idea he was on that Damn it! because i didn't see him move pre-snap if i knew he was in that position i wouldn't have thrown his direction and he gets a very good pick like i said a very good user he disguised himself well in the defense uh by not moving around too much which he doesn't do throughout the entire game i'll show you what i'm talking about later how i basically uh use that against him but on that play he did a very good job as like, like i said i had no idea where he where the user was on defense so very good play so back on defense we have some extra indicators now uh based off of the fact that we're with inside a two minute warning one of those indicators is the time he only has 54 seconds to go about 50 yards he's at the 28 so he's got to go about 50 yards to a point where he can actually get some points here so that's basically indicates that he's probably going to pass so i really don't have to spend too much time stopping the run here on the next play though i guess we had so much success with that on a third and 11 he does try to run it because he wasn't having any success in the air and now he's going to go for it on fourth and two which brings me to my next indicator and that's tendencies. Earlier in the game, he tried to hit me with a uh, slant play on a, uh, I think it was a fourth down and short. And sure enough, on this play, he hits me with slants again, which I basically completely shut down. Nope. He throws the ball away and he gives me the ball back right in scoring range. So now we're basically at tie ball game. I see his user uh, once again. He's doing something where, you know, he shows his hand this time. He didn't show where he was last time. So since he's in a cover three, I know he's probably going to drop back on that streak. I basically just put a the A route here on a drag. So the second he chases out of that zone, I'm going to have a nice catch and run to the A route. That's exactly what happens. He covers that, that streak grab the seam like he did last time. And then we're going to come right back around and try to bait him with that exact same look. So I'm going to go with the corner strike, which is a similar play with the streaking. Uh, you know, it's a one-play touchdown against cover three. Get locked. But I have the short route. So I'm hoping that he bites on the short route this time because I only need three yards. So hopefully that's enough of an indicator that he thinks I'm going to go short once again, try to dink him and dunk him. And he'll bite on that and leave the RB route go. And sure enough, he does. Psych! Break yourself, fool! And we get a really big one-play touchdown uh, right up the seam there. So that was perfectly executed. Uh, it was that was you know that's how you set somebody up right there. On this in the second half, we get ball. Uh, we're just going to do some running with Bo. Uh, ultimately, you know this is something that we have the lead. We're going to play with the lead. I don't I don't want to get too difficult here. He's still using really well. Second and one, he he knifes right where the ball is going, cuts me off, and I don't even get a yard. Next play, he overcommits a little bit though. I guess as he he sends the house a little bit too much, and we just take it right up the middle uh, with Bo. We're going to get a really big play. One once again, though, Bo gets caught. What the fuck? 
which I don't understand. This is supposed to be one of the most dominant cards in the game. How is he getting caught from behind? So on the goal line, uh, you know, we don't want to get caught in that same situation. I have a pretty good idea where he's going to be. I'm going to try to set up his user a little bit, give him a little bit of a fake motion as he is right over that cornerback again. And I try to hit him with an inside QB draw, but I don't really have uh, the speed of quarterback. This is I don't have Lamar Jackson right now like I typically do, so it doesn't work out. Then on third and goal, we try to hit him with another run. And I'm going to play it safe. I'm up a touchdown, so I'm just going to take the two-possession lead kick the field goal. It is what it is. So, you know, i got to play with the lead here. And now we have another indicator, which is my opponent is down uh, two scores late in the game. So that's an indicator that lets you know that your opponent is going to probably start airing the ball out or doing things at a faster pace, which is exactly what my opponent's going to do. If he, has any, if he wants any chance of winning this game, he pretty much has to. And since I know that, it doesn't necessarily mean that I can stop that. As you can see right here, beats me with a very big play, uh, which is exactly what he wants. So I probably should have came out in something more like a cover four quarters or something, uh, something more of that nature. Uh, next play here. Um, he's, you, you know he's going to pound the ball at this point. From the two-yard line, this is something that I don't typically do, but I think without a doubt, you have to guess uh, run in these situations. In previous years, I wouldn't have said that. It's kind of It would have been suicide. But this year, if you want to stop your opponent inside the five with a run, you have to guess run. And I do that pretty much every game now if my opponent gets into this position. Now, in the next play, though, in third and goal, I don't. And you can see he just walks right in. I'm thinking third and goal. He's been passing. I thought that he was going to pass there, too. Uh, but ultimately, it didn't work out. So next series on offense, we're going to set our opponent up with a motion again. You can see we have him over there uh, with the uh, with the motion out of the running back. He follows that. The ultimate plan was always to go to the drag just to get some yards anyway. You can see we get back. Then on third and five, um, you can see, number one, there's nobody over the Y route. He changed that last second, though. Now that I can see he's there, I don't know. He really commits to that zig, which is exactly where I wanted to go. But I didn't expect him to take the outside cornerback away from the streak. Break yourself, fool! So we go ahead, we take another uh, big lead. We're back up two touchdowns again. He's obviously going to be passing a lot now. We're in the fourth quarter. There's no denying that that's pretty much going to be only his offense now. Uh, unless, you know, maybe he'll run once again once he gets inside the five because that's typically what people do. But for now, we just got to come out and pass heavy offenses because that's his only game plan. It's all he can do. Um, he's hitting me, you know, like I said, he's going to play the boundaries. Time is the biggest thing now. We don't have to really worry about anything else. Just stopping him in bounds. Even if he gets yards, not giving up points, and the clock are the only things that matter so we're giving him a lot of underneath stuff because we're just trying not to give up any big explosive play i don't really care if he keeps dinking and dunking me because eventually he's going to run out of time he's not going to be able to score twice i don't have a lot of faith he's going to get the onside kick here like i said typically people become runners once they get inside the red zone but the clock is a bigger indicator now, and he doesn't really have the luxury to um, to do that. So still worried about the clock. He went out of bounds three or four times on his drives. So I'm going to come out in something heavy just in case he decides to run. And sure enough, he tries to hit me with slants once again. <laughs> has been you know a pretty consistent play for him in critical situations and we get the interceptions we cut them both off really so that's it that's the vid my opponent's gonna go ahead and quit if you guys want to see more videos like this let me know in the comment section hit the like button and i'll do that next other than that thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below